come seek an adventure in salty old pirates, eh? Sure you've come to the proper place, says I. But mark your words and look out for pirates. But keep a weather eye open, mates, and hold on tight. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean is, without a doubt, one of the classic attractions at Disneyland because it takes you away from the real world and carries you into an adventure beyond belief. And one of the ideas that our Imagineering team thought up was that we should go into each of our classic attractions and sort of you know, spruce them up for Disneyland's 50th and add new magic. We want to walk each of the scenes. We're on a little tight schedule, so we want to hit every scene quickly, identify any issues or concerns that we have so we can go back in and work with those. OK, you guys ready? That's good. We started with the notion of going into Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean um, and adding these new enhancements. And Walt Disney World got excited and said, well, we'd like to do that too. So it got us really excited and it got us really busy. And as we were doing that process of taking a look at Pirates of the Caribbean, um, we had an opportunity for the Pirates of the Caribbean movie had been released. And so we took a look at what are the elements that we could put from the movie into the attraction, just like they took um, some of our scenes from our attraction and seamlessly put them into the movie. Come on now. Come on, Dougie. Can we? Come on. Now we have a whole generation of kids who have grown up with the movies and the DVDs and know those characters better than they know our theme park characters. So when they come to Disneyland or Walt Disney World, they go on our Pirates and they say, where's Jack Sparrow? Where's Captain Barbosa? How the blazes did you get off that island? I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Imagineering and the people who create the Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland are adding some of our iconic characters uh, to the ride, which will be thrilling for us to go through and, and see characters that we help create now be part of uh, the Disney lore. This is Mr. X. Mr. X. Nice nice to you. Oh, you. Had a lot of fun. Your, your legacy. And, and, and <laughs> we're challenged by it. I'm a great admirer of many, many things you've been involved with. Thank, yeah, thank well you. Done. <laughs> Exitensio, who was my mentor at Imagineering when I started as a writer, who, of course, wrote the dialogue for Pirates of the Caribbean, um, wrote the lyrics for the song. He, he was quoted years ago when some of the things were changed in Pirates of the Caribbean of, you know, don't tamper with my baby. Um, and because X is a good friend of mine, I was doubly cautious as we were moving forward. But you know, when Walt Disney was alive, um, he loved Disneyland because unlike movies where he said, once I finished it, it's finished and I can't touch it, the parks are a living, breathing thing. And when Walt was alive, he was constantly tweaking and plussing and, and adding to his attractions. Um, and that's one of the things he loved most about it. We continue to do that as Imagineers today. You believe in pirates, of course. Oh, yes. So what we decided to do is not change parts of the Caribbean at either Walt Disney World or Disneyland, but enhance them. What we want to do is bring those fabulous characters from the Pirates of the Caribbean movie seamlessly into the attraction as though they've always lived there. We'll see you today, me Jones! So the idea here in this scene, and the captain is going to be changed into Barbosa. So he'll be the Jeffrey Rush character. The lines that, that Captain Barbosa says on the ship play against all his existing dialogue. So all the other characters in that scene are saying the dialogue as they always did. So everything that was done was meant to blend in and pay homage to what X had done. So this is what we did all the way through. I mean, with X's work, with Mark Davis, with Blaine's sculpture, everything we did, we wanted to plus it. Um, not tamper with it. While we're bringing in elements from the movie, um, we're also actually doing some enhancements to the overall attraction. Even the dead need to be refreshed once in a while. You know, this would probably be like up higher. I mean, that's just fallen down, so. We're actually going in and redigitizing all of the original audio tracks, so we'll have new audio tracks. Where be the treasure? Um, we are going in and enhancing the show lighting. Yeah, you're right. I think maybe the moon can be a little smaller. It starts from concept sketches in terms of the pose and the, the uh, development of the story. How does he fit into that? From that, our sculptor takes that character that we were trying to create and creates a, a plaster of, of the head so that we can then go into actually fabricating this fabulous figure. The challenge of each individual is trying to somehow through this surface of clay getting uh, more than just an external surface, but uh, something that, that 
evoke some kind of emotion. We have a little time to capture it because we're on a ride vehicle, and so we see these images for just a very short period of time. Show them your larboard side. We watch the redhead! We watch the redhead! We're just scum! You're in the throne. You're enjoying your jewels. In your left hand, you have sort of an open hand. The reason we uh, need to use a real person when we're positioning the figures is because the artificial figure that we create is actually capable of doing things that real bodies can't do. And, and sometimes, even if you're just a little off, the guest will look at it and say, ah, oh, that doesn't look right. And they may not be able to tell you why. But usually when you see something and you say, that doesn't look natural, it's because somebody didn't do the research. And so that's why we uh, make sure that we do the research. This is uh, the initial uh, prototype, which is sculpted in foam. And then these pieces will become um, butyrate shells that are just a thin shell, but they go around the mechanical exterior to fill out the clothing. There we go. Thumbs up. There you go. Thumbs, Thumbs up. up. Good job, Scott. Thank you very much. Scott and Scott's ahead of schedule. Like <laughs> what we're doing now is doing the final touches of his final posing, making little changes here and there to make him look like he's fitting in the chair, make him look like he's got the attitude. So you're, you're, you're right, right. This is the uh, skin room. This is where we manufacture the skins for the uh, animatronics. This is a uh, hot melt material, which is our uh, traditional skin material. Decision was made to use this traditional material on this show because it maintains the aesthetic look of the ride. All the, all the skins in the pirate ride are hot melt. Captain Jack Sparrow. Um, after the, the plastics has been completed, and we get the skull and the skin, we take our mechanism and, and place that inside of the fiberglass shell. It generally takes about 10 weeks uh, with a figure of this complexity to install all the eye blink mechanisms, eye left to right, eye up down. There's Barbosa on the ship and he's uh, firing. That's where you the, sail yeah. through and the cannons and, and go the cannons across are and going, there's explosions in And the we're going to add yeah. some new effects where you can feel the cannon blast go past you. Wow, that's fantastic. Just goes to show how handsome I am in real life. Absolutely. <laughs> We're also doing a new uh, uh, rehab to the treasure scene. No fear have ye of evil curses, says you. But there will be lots more gold and jewels. One of the challenges of creating this treasure has been the actual making of it, because most of it really isn't available. In the case of these coins, for instance, we've made them a lot like real coins would have been made of the period, actually creating a stamp that we carved out by hand, and then we stamped each one of these coins individually in clay so they'd each be a little different. Once we cast them up, we're going to use some actual gold leaf on them, and uh, you can see that they, you know, they translate well from that initial clay state into gold. We were actually lucky enough to get the Aztec chest that you may remember from the first Pirates of the Caribbean. And uh, we thought what would be interesting to do with that would be to have a little vignette where it stands all by its own as kind of a last little thing to see to catch your interest. Here's the Aztec chest from the movie. Creating a costume for an animatronic is an interesting challenge for many reasons. One, they don't move as a human would move. An animatronic figure will do the same 30 seconds or the same minute and a half of animation wearing through in spots that would never happen on a human figure. Right now I'm touching up the figure under show lighting. Um, normally when we paint it, it's under white light and it, you make it look good under daylight. But then once you put it under sh lighting with the heavy gels, all the shadowing starts getting softer. So you have to go back and actually accentuate it, then it brings out all the dimension of the figure. The completed figure is awesome. You look at it and just think, oh, what's he doing here? Every move is a Captain Jack move. And as an animator, you have to study and get in performance, study how he would move. Yo, ho, yo, ho, a pirate's life for me. We'll start getting the audio tracks in. Drink up, lads. 
There's treasure enough for all. And you start looking at the figure and going, oh, well, that's scary. Yo, oh, yo. By the time Captain Jack Sparrow, the figure's completed, and he will have roughly 15 to 20 functions. Johnny was really helpful in working with us to make sure that we got the essence of Jack Sparrow correct. He was so great throughout the whole process. He was very helpful. He, of course, recorded his own dialogue. He approved and worked with us on all the sketches. Um, and I think it pays off in what we created. Just like uh, the classic storytelling that you've been able to go through pirates over and over and over again and always see something new, now there's lots of new things for our guests to see and to enjoy and, and to, to be part of the story again. There's treasure enough for all. I shall take this paltry sum as a stipend to cover my expenses. <laughs> so this is a chase scene where we have Poop Pirate meets Captain Jack Sparrow. Unbelievable. Well, I've always um, loved the ride. Very proud. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm honored. Can I touch him? Boy. It's a little more than spooky. I mean, he's... That's it, isn't it? I mean, it's Captain Jack. There are no end credits that roll at the end of our attraction, so everybody pitches in, everybody gets excited about making it the best they can make it. I mean, we do it for the fun of our guests to, to make sure that Pirates of the Caribbean lives on as one of those must-see, core Disney attractions in the next century. Pirates life for me. We extort, we dover, we bilge and sack, drink up, me hearties, yo-ho. Marauding and dazzle and even hijack, drink up, me hearties.